in a paper titled, quote, Pharmacokinetics and Pharmacodynamics of Non-Steroidal Androgen Receptor Ligands, unquote, various non-steroidal androgen receptor ligands, such as bicalutamide, flutamide, and nilutamide, are discussed. These compounds, particularly the toluidines, like bicalutamide, serve as prime examples of non-steroidal antiandrogens. These compounds are specific to the AR, or the androgen receptor, without significant cross-reaction to other steroid receptors. Moreover, they exhibit long in vivo half-lives, with some lasting up to six days in humans. The extended action underscores the importance of half-life in determining the efficacy and convenience of topical treatments. Now, I'm not saying we're going to be using bicalutamide topically, although there are people that do use bicalutamide topically. More so, this paper is going to show us, or rather serve as a springboard in talking about other topical anti-androgens or just anti-androgens in general, specifically when it comes to being an agonist to the androgen receptor. So when looking at table two of the paper, we get a sense of the topical anti-androgens and their affinity to the androgen receptor. The table has a breakdown between anti-androgens that are usually taken orally and some that are enlisted for either oral or topical use. Now, one popular experimental topical anti-androgen that many people on the internet use on their research subject is RU58841. And we can see from the chart here that RU58841 only has a 5% affinity of DHT to the androgen receptor. But that doesn't show the full picture. I know in a video that I did before about RU58841, I erroneously made the claim that RU58841 only has a 5% affinity of DHT. But I do have to say that I misspoke because I was only talking in respect to the rat androgen receptor. So it's only 5% affinity for rat androgen receptors. That is just a correction that I had to make. However, in the context of RU58841's affinity to human androgen receptors, if we look at the paper titled, quote, Androgen Receptor Antagonist Structure Activity Relationships, unquote, authored by Shankar M. Singh, here we get the picture that RU58841 has a similar binding affinity to testosterone and the androgen receptor. So this makes RU58841 a significant antiandrogen and agonist to the androgen receptor. The paper states that, quote, RU58841 displayed two times less affinity than that of T for the hamster flank organ androgen receptor. However, activity was similar for the human androgen receptor. Unquote. So it's saying that it displayed two times less affinity than that of testosterone towards hamster organ androgen receptors. But when it came to humans, testosterone and RU58841 had the same binding affinity or a similar binding affinity. And this case seems to be true when examining RU58841's activity in stump-tailed macaques. What I find interesting about these stump-tailed macaques is that they're one of the few animals that experience androgenetic alopecia or male pattern baldness. But I guess in this case it would be simian pattern baldness or macaque pattern baldness. I don't know. Nevertheless, they do have a sensitivity or their species have members within it that have a sensitivity to DHT. And because they're also primates, there is reason to believe that their androgen receptors would be slightly similar or a bit more similar to us than that of other animals like mice. So that could be the case for why when it comes to RU58841, just like with human androgen receptors in stump-tailed macaques, both testosterone and RU58841 have a similar affinity for the androgen receptors of stump-tailed macaques. In the paper titled, quote, Evaluation of RU58841 as an anti-androgen in prostate PC3 cells and a topical anti-alopecia agent in the bald scalp of stump-tailed macaques, unquote, we have stated that RU58841 binds to the androgen receptor with an equivalent affinity to testosterone at 1.1 nanomolar, which the paper directly states, quote, the potency of RU58841 in this transient transfection study was not as high as expected given its binding affinity for the androgen receptor at 1.1 nanomolar. In the case of class Cauterone or CBO301, here we have another topical antiandrogen, but it was approved by the FDA to treat acne and it may very well soon be approved to treat androgenetic alopecia. And its mechanism works similar to that of RU58841. It's meant to saturate the skin and scalp and bind to the androgen receptors. 
preventing DHT from inducing its acne properties by overexciting sebaceous glands to produce more sebum and also blocking the androgen receptor in hair follicles so DHT cannot send messages to the hair follicle cells to miniaturize. It should be noted that in the paper titled, quote, Vortexalone 17-alpha propionate, or clascoterone, is a novel androgen receptor antagonist that inhibits production of lipids and inflammatory cytokines from sibiocytes in vitro, unquote. We learn that clascoterone binds to the androgen receptor with an affinity that is 100-fold lower than that of DHT. Now, DHT binds to the androgen receptor with approximately two to three times higher affinity than that of testosterone. For simplicity's sake, let's use the factor of 2.5 as a midpoint. If clascoterone binds with an affinity that is 100-fold lower than that of DHT, then its binding affinity is 1 100th of DHT's affinity. Now, to compare this to testosterone, considering DHT's affinity is We'll say for this sake, the midpoint, 2.5 times that of testosterone, clascoterone's affinity would be 1 40th or 2.5% the affinity of testosterone.